Assalamu alaikum and welcome to a brand new episode of Roundup. In today's episode, we have a lot of reports available and ready for you. So let's check out what we have in store today. Coming up in this week's Roundup, we take a look into the dire situation in Israel and Palestine and hear what Hazrat Khalif al Masih's guidance is on the matter. Also in this episode, we take you into the English countryside for a look into the national ishtamas of both Majlis Khudam al Ahmadiyya and Lajnai Maila, which were both graced by Hazul's presence. Wow, we really do have a lot to cover this week. That's right, Nasser. But first, let's see what's in the news this week. Jazakallah and assalamu alaikum, dear viewers. Let's take a look at the stories in the, in the news this week. We commence with a story on this year's World Mental Health Day. Tuesday, 10th October marked World Mental Health Day, a global event raising awareness and about mental health. This year's theme was set by the World Federation for Mental Health, which proclaimed that mental health is a universal human right. The aim is to encourage governments around the world to do more on a global level, as well as discuss what else can be done. According to research by Material Focus, nearly half a billion small electricals, including cables, decorative lights, and mini fans were thrown away last year. Data from the research found 90% of items were thrown away soon after being purchased. Material Focus warns that these fast tech items could potentially become an issue that can outstrip so-called fast fashion. Get ready for thrilling sport updates now, and Ghanibai, as our upcoming stories delve into some of our favourite sports. Lionel Messi will not be joining another team on loan after the Major League football season ends. The Inter Miami captain has been leagued with a return to Barcelona and, to the, and a switch to the Saudi Pro League. However, Spanish journalist Balaguer has reported that Messi is not going anywhere except on holidays. The 2023 ICC Men's Cricket World Cup, hosted by India, commenced on October 5th and it is set to conclude on November 19th. England, who emerged victorious in the 2019 edition by defeating New Zealand, are the, def are the defending champions. Turning our attention to a recent match, Australia experienced the most significant World Cup loss against South Africa on Wednesday. They are in for a tough test as they prepare to face Sri Lanka, who performed significantly better against South Africa in the opening game. Let's watch and see who, who emerges victorious in this year's World Cup. Stay tuned for ongoing updates. Those were the stories this week. Now back to you, Nasan and Rani Bai, for the next part of today's programme. Jazakla Ushman for the roundup of this week's news. We have more news in a moment, including the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine. Of course, we are blessed to have Hadrat Khalifa al Masih's guidance on all these topics, including this ongoing conflict. So, let's go to Asal and Osman for the key takeaways of this Friday sermon. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the most important part of the show, where we discuss the recent Friday sermon delivered by beloved Hazur, may Allah be his helper. That's right. In the recent Friday sermon, beloved Hazur, may Allah be his helper, mentioned some very important topics, some that affect people around the world, including those the same ages as you. Absolutely. Today, we want to talk about recent events and conflicts in some parts of the world. It's important to understand what's happening. And we also want to encourage you to think about how we can make the world a better place. That's right. First, we heard about an interesting story involving Hazrat Aisha, Raziatala Anha, the wife of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was not just a remarkable woman, but also a brilliant scholar who had a significant role in the Islamic history. Hazrat Aisha, Raziatala Anha's life, teaches us about the importance of education and leadership, no matter our age. She was well known for her wisdom and knowledge, and we can all strive to learn from her example. Beloved Hazur also talked about the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas. It's a challenging situation, and innocent children on both sides are being affected. This is where you, our viewers, come into the picture. Absolutely, Osman. It's important to understand that war and conflict everywhere is terrible. Everyone should work together towards peace and understanding. Whether you're Muslim or from another religion, the teachings of kindness and empathy are universal. Hazur said that unity and justice are the keys to a peaceful world. Remember, always support those who are oppressed and help prevent any form of injustice. Usman, before we wrap up, let's give our viewers some takeaway points. Learn from positive role models like Hazrat Aisha Razitala Anha to excel in education and leadership. Strive for unity and understanding no matter where you come from. Always promote peace and justice, and speak out against any form of injustice. That's it for our Friday sermon discussion. Jazakallah, Osman. Remember, brothers and sisters, we shouldn't forget to try to listen to all of beloved Hazul's sermon 
as it's filled with blessings and many more interesting things for us to learn. Until next time, Assalamu As alaikum. Jazakallah, as we just heard, the devastating conflict between Israel and Palestine has taken a turn for the worse. Let's take an in depth look at what is happening and how we got to that point. Today we're talking about a very challenging and difficult situation, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's a complex situation that's been going on for a long time, with its roots and events from over a century ago. Recently, there has been a significant development in this ongoing conflict. The world's attention has been drawn to the situation in the Gaza Strip after a group called Hamas and Israel had a major confrontation. It's a serious situation that's got people everywhere very worried. In this recent conflict, it's reported that over 3,500 Israelis have been affected by the actions of Hamas and over 6,000 Palestinians have lost their lives due to Israel's response. It's essential to understand that among those affected, many were innocent people like children, not just soldiers. Following the recent conflict, Israel announced a total blockage on the Gaza Strip. This means they stopped many essential things like food and fuel from going into the area. This move is seen by some as a violation of international laws meant to protect people during conflicts. Now Israel has also announced and warned that over a million Palestinians in the north have 24 hours to move to the south before a full ground invasion, a relocation which has been described as impossible. Violence has been particularly high this year. The number of Palestinian civilians killed in the occupied West Bank by Israeli forces since the year began has been the highest in nearly two decades. For these ongoing challenges, beloved Hazor in his recent Friday sermon spoke regarding these conflicts and urged Muslim nations to unite in order to establish justice and to support the oppressed. Aise halat mein Musliman mulkon ko muskam hosh ke dakhon lene chahiye. Apne ikhtilafat mita kar, apni wadat ko kaim karna chahiye. Agar Muslimano ko yeh daayat Allah Taala ne ऐसे किताब से तलुकात बेहतर करने के लिए दी है कि तालो इलाकलेमतिन सवाइन बैना ना वो बैना कुम इस कलमे की तरफ आ जाओ जो हमारे और तुम्हारे दरमियान मुश्तरिक है हेल्लो ताला की जात है तो मुसलमान जिनका कलमा मुकम्मल तौर पर एक है क्यों इख्तलाफात खत्म करके कठे नहीं हो सकते Musliman, Hukumtongo bhi akal aur samaj de, aur ek ho kriyan saaf kaim karne wale bane, aur dunia ki taaktong ko bhi akal aur samaj de, ke dunia ko tabai mein dalne ke bajaye, dunia ko tabai se bichane ki koshish kare. Jazakallah for that report. Let's continue to keep the innocent civilians in our prayers that they may be granted ease and relief. Amen. Moving on now, can you believe it's already been more than a month since we got back from Germany? Yes, it has. And we really enjoyed visiting the beautiful city of Stuttgart. And now we're going to take you back for a sightseeing tour. So let's take a look. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Liebe Kinder, ich freue mich, euch heute bei diesem Round up mitnehmen zu können. Ich bin richtig aufgeregt und ihr wahrscheinlich auch. Denn nach langer Zeit findet endlich wieder die Delta Solana in Deutschland statt. Genauer gesagt, die 47. Delta Solana, diesmal in Stuttgart. Eine perfekte Gelegenheit, um, um euch heute bei diesem Roundup in die Stadt mitzunehmen. Stuttgart liegt im Südwesten von Deutschland und ist gleichzeitig die Hauptstadt vom Bundesland Baden-Württemberg. Stuttgart ist die sechstgrößte Stadt Deutschland und eben weil sie so riesig ist, hat sie vieles zu bieten. Stuttgart ist berühmt für Autofirmen. Gottlieb Daimler, einer der Erfinder von Autos, hat hier in Stuttgart gelebt und seine Autofirma Daimler, heute bekannt als Mercedes-Benz Group AG, hat wie Porsche ihren Sitz hier in Stuttgart. Wenn er Stuttgart fährt, dir wird wahrscheinlich auffallen, dass Stuttgart im Kessel liegt. 
Das heißt, umgeben von Hängern. Die Messerhallen, die unser Silzer Solana Gelände sind, sind direkt in der Nähe vom Flughafen. Das Silzer Solana Gelände umfasst übrigens über 120.000 Quadratmeter. Das sind fast 17 Fußballfelder. Doch viele von euch kennen die Stadt Stuttgart nicht und fragen sich, was man hier alles machen kann. Deshalb teile ich mit euch gerne meine Lieblingsspots. Ein Wahrzeichen von Stuttgart ist der Fernsehturm, der auch weltweit der erste seinesgleichen ist. Er hat eine tolle Aussichtsplattform, vor der man die ganze Stadt und die Schwäbische Alb sehen kann. Vielleicht habt ihr ihn bei eurer Ankunft ja auch schon gesehen. Für alle Tierliebhaber unter euch kann ich den Zoologisch-Botanischen Garten Wilhelma empfehlen. Hier könnt ihr Tiere und Pflanzen bewundern. Liebt ihr auch Bücher? Für mich jedenfalls darf der Besuch in einer Bibliothek der Stadt niemals fehlen. Die Stadtbücherei in Stuttgart hat mir wirklich gefallen. Die Architektur war schön. Wusstet ihr, dass es damals einen Wettbewerb gab und der Architekt dieser, dieser Bibliothek, Oin Yung Yi, diesen Wettbewerb gewonnen hatte? Und an regnerischen Tagen wie heute kann man das Mercedes-Benz Museum besuchen. Es hat 160 Automodelle. In einer Art Rundgang wird die Autogeschichte und die Weltgeschichte in einer interessanten Weise erklärt. Also nicht nur was für Autofans. Außerdem haben Kinder unter zwölf Jahren kostenfreien Eintritt. So, das waren meinerseits die besondersten Sehenswürdigkeiten in Stuttgart. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wow, Stuttgart really is a beautiful city. It's so hard to believe that we were there with almost 48,000 amenities for Jalsa. I'm glad we had an opportunity to see the city here on Roundup since we were so busy during Jalsa and didn't get to sightsee. Absolutely. Now, with the summer of Jalsa's over, we moved on to Ishtamaz. The auxiliaries of Lajna and Nasirat al UK, as well as Qadam and Adfal al Ahmadiyya UK, held their national Ishtamaz over the past few weekends. We've got our reporters covering both of the Ishtamaz for us to bring us all of the highlights, including beloved Azul's addresses. Assalamu alaikum. We are here at the Lajna and Nasa National Ishtama for a blessed weekend for girls and women of all ages to elevate their spirituality, increase their religious and worldly knowledge while strengthening their bond of sisterhood. <laughs> This is the month we are continuing to celebrate 100 years of Lajna Imaila that continues to empower and inspire Ahmadi women around the world. Nasrat from all over the UK gathered to take part in academic competitions. In addition to presentations and competitions, Lajna also celebrated their creative talent through the quilt competition. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Research Association held a number of workshops and lectures addressing everything from artificial intelligence to imposter syndrome. By the grace of Allah Almighty, our beloved Huzur, may Allah be his helper, graced the 44th Lajna and Nasrat National Ishtama. He delivered a faith-inspiring address to all attendees. Some may wonder what is meant by sacrifice in this day and age. It is quite simple uh, to act upon the commands of Allah, the Almighty, and the Holy Prophet at all times. It is to worship Allah five times a day at the appointed times. It is to study and ponder over the meaning of the Holy Quran and to act upon its commands. It is to train your children according to Islam's teachings and instill Islamic values within them. May it be that your sacrifices and unwavering loyalty to your faith come to be recorded in the history of Islam, just like those women who accepted Islam in the time of the Holy Prophet May it be that when the time comes to write the history of this era, the blank page of which I spoke is decorated with stories of countless Amdi women from this era who proved that they were ready for every sacrifice for the sake of their faith and who gloriously fulfilled their responsibilities to their religion. May it be that history bears witness to the fact that Ahmadi women were at the vanguard of establishing the oneness of God in the world. And may we soon come to witness the momentous spiritual victory 
of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu where the people of all nations and races spiritually unite and embrace Islam's true teachings. Surely only in that lies the salvation of the world. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the National Atfal and Qudam Ishtama of 2023. Like every year, there's lots of activities for Atfal and Qudam to get involved with. There's exhibitions, competitions, and even inspirational talks. Hold on, why don't I just show you? First of all, we have the Atfal area. Atfal academics have been taking place in the main Atfal guard just over there. But if you look behind me, there's lots of fun activities for the Atfal to get involved with. Also, the Atfal hub has even more things to get involved with, like learning about the model village in Gambia. The Khudam hub is just as vibrant as ever with the now famous Hub Cafe, where you can grab a snack while listening to inspiring discussions covering a wide range of modern day issues. And attendees test themselves with both physical and mental challenges. When the hunger pangs hit, the longer corner serves delicious food. But if you're in the mood for something a bit more indulgent, the bazaar is fired up and ready. Whether it be burgers or ice cream, maybe both. Not to forget the theme of this year's Ishtama, Salat, the delight of our eyes. Everything stops when the Azan is called and everyone fulfills our obligations to Allah the Almighty. The exhibition is always a highlight and when the sun starts to set, the fireside chats are engaging and a really unique experience. But as we come to the final day, there's always the highlight of the Ishtama, beloved Hazur Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasir al-Aziz, blessing us with his presence and always giving us valuable advice. As Ahmadi youth, you must continue to reflect and analyze your state and try to better your moral and spiritual standards so that your relationship with Allah develops to the extent that you are included amongst the truthful and righteous. As Muslim Aud also took the pledge from the members of Khudam al-Hamdiya on that occasion, all Khudam stood and repeated the words of the pledge with a firm and resolute desire to fulfill it. And so today, I wish, I wish to take the same pledge from all of you. I swear by Allah, I swear by Allah and proclaim, and proclaim that, uh, that I will always endeavor, will always endeavor to, convey to convey and propagate, and propagate the teachings of Islam, Islam Ahmadiyyat and the blessed name, the blessed name of, the Holy Prophet, of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the corners, the corners of earth, of earth until, until my dying breath. So that's a wrap on this is Ishtama. We hope to see you next year, inshallah. But until then, Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah for those lovely reports. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for in today's episode. But don't forget to join us next week when we're having even more intriguing reports from all around the world. If you'd like to give us any feedback, feel free to contact us on our social media or email us at roundup.mj.tv. But in the meantime, don't forget to check out our Instagram. We'll be posting some exclusive content and behind the scenes. Once again, Jazakallah for checking out this week's episode and don't forget to tune in next week. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. Oh, I shall call, oh, I shall call, I shall call, oh, I shall call, oh, I shall call, oh, call. Darkness seek to reach all the planets of the earth. Oh, I shall call, oh, I shall call, I shall call, oh, I shall call, oh, I shall call. Darkness seek to reach all the planets of the earth. Oh, I shall call, oh, I shall call, I shall call, oh, I shall call, I shall call. Darkness seek to reach all the planets of the earth.